Hey guys, MasterCollect here. Before we begin today's video, I just want to tell you guys that I have a new shirt out on Teespring. If you want to be part of the Go Crew too, check out the link in the description or on the screen. See you around! This woman is a saint and you should feel bad for mocking her. Hey guys, MasterCollect here. And today, we're going to be discussing what's up with the Son family. We're not going to talk about Gohan, Goku, or Goten, that's too obvious. We've done that before, or probably will do so in the future. No, we're delving into something that was suggested by Travis Bailey over on Twitter. What's up with Chi Chi, and how the hell does she cope? Thanks Travis, by the way. With the advent of Super, a whole new batch of lore and character development was laid down before us. And that's what I love about Super. After years of nothing new in terms of storyline, now in the last two years we've got oodles and oodles of stuff that we'll be looking at and researching and delving deep to for years to come. This is great! We've got new stuff about everything, including the relationship between Goku and Chi Chi. Now yes, I know I'm gonna get some of you in the comments just saying, WHY ARE YOU TALKING ABOUT CHI CHI? SHE'S A MEAN BITCH THAT DOESN'T LET GOHAN DO ANYTHING! SHE'S A HORRIBLE PARENT! Yes, yes, I get it. I get it because I used to think like that too. I remember back in the day watching Dragon Ball Z and hating Chi Chi's guts. She was a drag man, like most TV mothers. I thought she was just going out of her way to be as anally retentive as possible and making sure that nobody had any fun. And I imagine that a lot of you think or thought the same way. You know, the whole thing making Gohan study day in, day out all the time and barely having any fun. Yeah, that pained me greatly. However, as I got older, I actually began to understand why she is the way she is. And you know what now? I actually kind of like her. Yeah, I didn't expect that. She is a woman who is trying her damnedest to provide a very much normal life for her family. And, you know, she's had to make a lot of sacrifices to do so, including giving up the title as Princess of a Fire Mountain. That's a kick-ass title. And also a big step down. She wants both her children to be smart, strong-willed, respectful, and able to accomplish anything that their heart desires, so long as it's something relatively academic. Well, they can sort of take on the world already, given that they've inherited the strength of their father. You know, they can punchy punchy stuff and they won't go down. You gotta hand it to Chi Chi. As a mother, she has brought up two excellent children in Gohan and Goten. One is a polite, respectful, and extraordinarily academic young man, and the other is a kind, playful soul who is also kind of respectful in the same way. Even though you might not think it, Goten has a lot of good manners, much more than his father. They're not a bunch of delinquents. Granted, sometimes she can be petty and mean-spirited, but that's a rare occasion. But if she were a truly bad mother and wife, then that household will be full of misery and pain and sadness. It's not. Sure, it can be kind of dysfunctional, but what family isn't? As far as a family unit goes, the Son family is a pretty good one. However, in Super, things between Goku and Chi Chi didn't look so rosy as they once did. Chi Chi had basically gotten tired of Goku doing nothing around the house, and since the riches that her father had were starting to dwindle, she is actually insisting, nay demanding, that Goku gets a job, and actually helps develop their fruit and veg business, which is actually somewhat successful. Cool! That's fair enough. Goku's got a lot of strength and a lot of potential, they can save a huge amount in terms of labour costs. Goku can do the job of what, like, hundreds of people? You know, just go through the lawn and just pick up all the veg and fruit and, you know, there you go. But despite that, the way that the manga and the anime portray her, it's actually kind of harsh. I'll get to why that might be later, it's actually kind of sad. The biggest, uh, I guess, controversy is the revelation that Goku and Chi Chi never kissed. At least not on the lips. My pal Geekton went into this topic too, and he debunked the dub kiss. Check out his video in the top right. Now some might argue that Goku doesn't know what a kiss is, but I disagree. You would think that after over two decades of marriage that Goku would have asked the question about what kissing is. You know, it would have come up in the conversation at least once. It would have probably gone along the lines of, Uh, Chi Chi, what's that thing you're doing with your mouth? No, no, not that thing, the other thing. Oh, it's a kiss. Oh. Can I eat it? Well, it depends where you kiss it. Anyways! Goku is a curious soul, so he would have asked about it eventually. Vegeta is aghast at Goku's lack of romantic endeavours and capability and general incompetence on the situation, which is something I touched on in a previous discussion. So what's up with all these Saiyans then? They have no clue about love. Well, that's actually kinda true. Toriyama has gone into detail many times, and I shall share a quote with you right now. 
This particular quote is when Toriyama's talking about same relationships in regards to the Dragon Ball Minus manga when that came out roughly about 2014. He goes into detail about why Saiyan relationships are different from human relationships. Bardock is a Saiyan too, so he is warlike, but compared to other Saiyans, who are cold-hearted and of simple thoughts, he also happens to possess calm judgement and a small measure of humanity. Normally, Saiyans don't have much of a notion of romance or marriage, and apart from the royal family of Vegeta, they aren't particular about blood relationships. The quartet of Bardock, Gine, Raditz and Kakarot make up Bardock's family, such as it is, but all four of them were never together. Also, I think that Bardock himself might have had siblings, but perhaps even Bardock himself doesn't really know. And at any rate, he probably has no interest in it either. Saiyans don't have much of a concept of family. So already, Saiyans don't have really much of an understanding at all about love and romance. They're a pretty isolated bunch. Once you plop out of your mother's womb, or grow in a pod as it shows in the Dragon Ball Minus manga, you're kind of basically on your own. I mean, your parental units might check in on you every now and again just to make sure you're strong enough to fight in a battle one day, but other than that, don't expect your mother or your father to be around you. If you're expecting your Saiyan dad to play ball with you, then you've got another thing coming. What you can also deduce from this quote is that Chi Chi is going to have an uphill struggle trying to get Goku to mimic a human-like husband. Now you might think that Goku's head injury turned him completely human in personality and instinct and all that kind of stuff, but no. It probably did some things, but other things it kind of just stayed all Saiyan-y. Toriyama continues, Vegeta, whose pride had been deeply wounded, sought help from Bulma, and little by little, his ruthless personality changed. Nowadays, you certainly might be able to say that. On the other hand, Goku might not have a sense of family members like Gohan and Chi Chi, except as one of his companions. Yeah, talk about a slap in the face. There's not a lot she can do to be fair. Back in the days of Dragon Ball, she had to pester Goku like nobody's business just to get to meet him again, and then eventually had to conclude that the only way to get through Goku's thick noggin is to communicate in a way that only Goku knows best. Fighting! That got his attention. Chi Chi had to train for the Tenkaichi Budokai and fight Goku one on one just to get close to him and actually say what she's thinking. And really in that arc she is really really capable and gives Goku a run for his money. What a strong woman. Now okay this doesn't exactly sound romantic and all but that could be down to Toriyama. He has openly admitted that he is not good with writing romance into his stories and whenever he can or if he can help it he will just not do it. Yeah. It kind of shows. Dragon Ball is not the place to go if you want to have deep, insightful, and really emotional relationships with other people. Go watch Mysterious Girlfriend X for that. The only silver lining in all of this is that at least none of Toriyama's characters, or at least the main characters, are total jerks. He ensured that Goku, even though he wasn't good at romance, was at least nice and respectful to girls and women. That all came from his upbringing by Grandpa Gohan, so, you know, Nurture did kind of win over nature at least in that aspect. So yeah, Goku may not be good at romantic social cues, but at least he's not going to be a total douche to women. At the end of the day, he's just incredibly naive and actually kind of asexual. Now going back to Toriyama for a second, I believe that at the 23rd Tenkaiji Budokai is the place where Toriyama was sort of getting writer's remorse for creating Chi Chi. Originally, Chi Chi was a shy, awkward young girl, the total opposite of her father, the Ox King, who was big and mighty and mean. Unless you knew Master Roshi, of course, in which case, he's a total jolly soul. Now, despite this shyness, she is actually kind of strong, but Toriyama didn't really kind of work with that sort of thing. And as Chi Chi grew up, she became a bit of a tomboy, which is something Toriyama is much more adept at writing at. That personality took hold within Chi Chi, and as a result, she kicked a lot of ass. This change of mood comes straight down to the fact that Toriyama prefers to write strongly willed women, which I'm perfectly okay with. But what gets me down is that Toriyama had to change Chi Chi's character at all. The fact that he just kind of got bored with her or annoyed with her or even started to hate her as a character and in fact he has actually gone on record to say that he cannot stand writing and drawing Chi Chi. He talks about this in an interview he did with one of his colleagues, Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru. To be honest, I'm not really fond of Chi Chi as a character. In the middle of the comic I started to think, I don't want to draw her anymore. And sort of as a way of spiting myself I decided, you'll have to draw her if she gets married to Goku so marry them off. So I drew her as a kind of punishment. Well, the, this kind of makes sense actually. Toriyama at first was perfectly okay with Chi Chi. He saw her as an experiment to write something demure, nice, sweet, aww. Try and get some kind of romantic relationship with Goku, but eventually he realised, yeah that didn't work. 
What actually came across between Goku and Chi-Chi was a misunderstanding with slight comedic elements. Not exactly romance. So yeah, Toriyama reverted to his basic writing style from then on. In Toriyama's mind, she could just retreat back into the background, become the stereotypical nagging housewife of the era, whilst Goku goes off on wacky adventures across the world and then space. Just so that means he didn't have to draw her all that much. Okay, I know that Akira Toyama is socially awkward and really naive when it comes to romance and whatnot, but his behavior with Chi-Chi is pretty incompetent and kind of disrespectful. Degrading her from a princess, then actually making her a strong and capable young woman, which is actually good, to a blusterous and easily provoked housewife who barely featured. Now I'm guessing this is due to the cultural norm of late 80s Japan. It's a whole lot different to Western traditions and beliefs at the time, and especially now. Having said that though, she does have her moments occasionally in the movies, but mind you, the movies are usually written by people that aren't Toriyama, he kind of just oversees it. Hey, he doesn't care about Chi Chi so long as he doesn't have to write about it. So how does Chi Chi cope with all of this? A writer who hates her, a husband that may have given her two sons, but otherwise treats her just like a friend and not really sexually or romantically at all? All the while living out in the middle of nowhere with barely any friends to talk to, save from the Satan household, 18, Bulma, the usual crowd. No one really knew, or at least ones that we don't see. It's kind of a lonely existence. Thank God her children are nice. So the next time you see Chi Chi, don't think of her as a bitch. Think about what she has to deal with. You'll begin to understand why she is the way she is. Let's hope that outside help in the writing department will change Goku and Chi Chi's relationship for the better. It worked wonders for Krillin and 18. So what do you guys think? Do you like Chi Chi as a character? Do you think that she's been treated unfairly by Toriyama? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.